Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Profit Builder. I'm Vicki Suter, your host, and these videos are all about helping you build a more profitable contracting business, find more time in your day, and reclaim the joy and fun in what you do again. And this video series that I'm sharing with you is a series of interviews that I've done with business owners and leaders who are uh, successful in their own right in the contracting industry and people who I respect quite a bit. And the reason I chose to do this series is because I think that a lot of times we really could benefit from hearing other people's stories and hearing where people have had to break through and where they had a struggle and they overcame that struggle and how did they do that. And to also be able to hear like tips and ideas from other leaders that they have found to be helpful in their own journey and helping them build better businesses and have better lives. I really enjoyed doing these interviews with people. It was really fun hearing their stories and I'm very excited to share them with you because I think that uh, you're gonna get a lot out of hearing from them. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and we'll share the next story. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Profit Builder. I'm Vicki Suter, your host, and I am super excited to continue our series on leadership and very grateful to have my guest Peter Lau with Ford Mazzola here with me today. Um, as, a, as somebody that I've known, Peter, you and I have known each other for you, you were just reminded me, 23 years. Yeah, about 23 years is when we <laughs> um, first met, yeah. Yeah, since we first met, but we've been working together more closely since 2018 when you became a principal at Ford Mazzola. Um, so first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for being here and um, being willing to share your wisdom as a leader and your experience and your story. So thank you. Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Vicki. It's always great to have conversations with you. That I really appreciate them. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, you know, uh, one of the, I, I started, you and I were talking just a little bit, bit ago and talking about why am I doing this series? And I, and I just want to remember, remind people who maybe this is the first of this series that you're listening to, but I decided to interview leaders that I know who I really respect and admire, who I see have been successful in building their business and growing themselves and their companies and who I felt had a story to share with you listening or watching that could support you in your leadership journey. Because I think a lot of times it's very, it's lonely being at the top. You know, a lot of times we don't have that, those other people to be able to draw on who understand our world and understand the journey that we're on. And I just think that hearing from other leaders sometimes it's, I think it's just a good way for us to realize, hey, um, there's other people who have been on this path and who maybe provide some insights or inspiration to you. And um, yeah, so I'm going to, so here's how it's going to go. I'm going to ask Peter some questions. Peter, we're going to kind of go through those questions. And uh, if we, you know, uh, go off on a certain path of inquiry um, in these questions, then all the better. And uh, so I'm going to kind of jump in and ask my first question. Uh, so the first question is, what do you feel was one of your greatest lessons that you learned along the way that shaped you as a leader? You know, um, great to challenge me with a tough question from the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I look at, I think, two things mainly, process and content. And for me in particular, uh, knowing, knowing, what, knowing my trade knowing who I am and knowing the content and specifics and the details, because in construction, I feel like the strategies can't really fully develop unless you really understand the very specifics of a project or a client or a, or a project team from consultants to subcontractors. It's a pretty complex mix. So just having the competency to look at process and the patience and focus to get down into the detail, I think having that really raises the level of being able to develop a strategy and work with your team. And I think that's probably the biggest lesson over the years that I've learned is try to yeah. be mindful of both of those and bring it's, that with you. Yeah, totally. And it's that 
thing of, um, I, I can appreciate that because when you have that, I always say like when we have clarity, we have more confidence. When we have more confidence, we can take more powerful actions. Um, but let me ask you a question. Where did you learn that? Like, like, is there a particular place or time or event or situation where you were like, uh, like that? Yeah, I, um, you know, I spent some time overseas. Uh, one of my um, experiences was in the Middle East in Qatar and Doha from 2010 to 2015. And uh, I was just fortunate to work with people that put me in a position where it became very clear that unless we understood the details, we wouldn't exceed, succeed because there was just, just a lot of very high expectations and thresholds to deliver a project of amazing quality, be mindful of the budget and the schedule. And that's, you know, construction is always about those three. And so it was just learning those tools um, through some key mentors of mine. You know, I think one of the other things about me and when I think of leadership is, who are my mentors? Who are my peers? You know, working with someone like you, who's a great coach, mentor, and friend has always really helped me sort of uh, develop those understandings. And so I had a particularly good mentor at the time and just learned a lot through him working on this. This uh, it, was it was a quite amazing project. It was a $6 billion project and we developed over a hundred building, buildings for the um, for urban revitalization project in downtown Doha. So I think that was sort of like brought years of experience before that into sort of like a mindset that I could process differently. And I think that's the moment where I, a lot of things begin to click for me. Wow. And that's, that's fascinating that a project that size that where you started this conversation was talking about, you know, when I asked you that question, your response was knowing who the team is and knowing who all the cast of characters are and how the role they play and how they, you know, how all of that interfaces on a project um, that you talk about a project of that magnitude and to be able to maintain that is incredible. Um, and so I'm I'm very curious to ask because I think that this is a place where there, you know, I see this, I see that where there's tends to be this disconnect of not everybody knows what everybody else is doing, right? Not everybody's on the same page. So, you know, you obviously had to do that on an enormous project. Mm. What is like, and you, you don't do projects in that size today, but you've incorporated that in your work today. What's the, what is the, what's your mechanism? What's your, what's your strategy for how you do that or how, yeah, what's your, what's your process um, of doing that? So again, I'll go back to mentors in my life. I remember working, uh, my first stint with Ford Mazzola Associates was back in 2000, 2000, 2006. And uh, the person that brought me into Ford Mazzola and to meet Dave Ford and Charles Mazzola, um, I had worked with before uh, and he had joined the company and convinced me to come over. But he, he would always talk about um, time and focus. And so I think we all have our limits. And even on that massive project of $6 billion, you know, you can only do so much and I maxed out. And this is an industry like many businesses where you feel maxed out in terms of the pressures. It's trying to understand that, and this is my view, that it, it's uh, success doesn't come without time and focus on an issue. And so you have to have the ability to focus on it and give it some time. And we're all constrained in business to go fast and make quick decisions. Mm -hmm. So there's competing interests, but just trying to hold on to that is I, I've learned is very important to developing an approach toward, toward success or a tool toward um, leading, leading an issue or leading a team. Okay. So you prioritize that as like um, a big rock, like a big chunk of this is really important. And that makes it so that it doesn't get lost or doesn't get forgotten. Yeah. I mean, I, I as a business owner um, with my partners, Charles Mazzola and Aaron Bortolazzo, we, we, we have never wanted to get big for the sake of getting big. We've always wanted to maintain control of, of a certain volume of work so we can give it the right attention because it's without that, again, it's the focus, it's the attention, it's the attention you give something and it's giving it the right, right amount of time to deal with that we feel brings success to a project. And that's what we think our clients deserve that. 
Nice. So, okay. So it's a core principle about how you run your business. Yeah. 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 Okay. And never, you know, everyone's different, right? So it's, you know, I'm sure people who are part of your audience or your clients and your, 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 your peer groups, you know, everyone's going to have their own different approach, but it's, it's also understanding oneself and beginning to lean into the things that you've learned have brought success before. And I, I'm just a big person with mentors, coaches, reaching out to people, having dialogues. I always feel like it's the dialogue that brings something new to the, to the forefront of one's mind. And I mean, you know, you and I have had some great conversations over the years and uh, it's invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I really appreciate about you, and I think this is what you're speaking to right now is um, you're a learner and you're like, you, you come to it with, I know what I know. And you also come to it with a humility, a humility and an eagerness to learn of, and there's more to learn and there's more to grow and there's more, you know, there's more information just than what I know. And I really appreciate how you seek out counsel and get different perspectives and different input when you're about to make a, a you know, a big decision or, you know, even just in your day-to-day -day running of the business. And I really, I admire that, admire that about you because I think that that's, I mean, that's how we continue to grow and evolve as human beings. But I also think that it's um, such a beautiful way to be able to help us continue to, you know, get better as leaders and to have, um, it, to have that ability to be able to know that when I build those relationships around me where I can reach out, it also helps us not feel so isolated mm. and that we seek out that input and build those relationships. And I think that's so um, important uh, for leaders uh, to not feel isolated, right? Like, so how do I surround myself with people that I can pick up a phone and call and go, hey, got this going on or hey, I'm challenged with that or what do you think about this? Yeah. Um, and it, it, what it requires is, uh, you know, our ego not getting the better of us <laughs> and thinking that we should have all, and it's not really ego, like in a bad way. I think it's more like we think we should have all the answers because we're the, you know, the guy or gal running the business. Um, but the truth is none of us do, nobody does. Um, so I, I really, yeah, I've watched you over the years. Um, lean into being somebody who is willing to go ask for input, support, help, you know, a perspective on different situations. And I think that's part of what really makes you a great leader. Well, thank you. And I think the core word you said is the, is the relationships, right? Because it's the relationships that lead to the conversations. And, you know, I keep thinking you know, when, when we face I think we tend to build off experiences and try to hone in on which tool works best, which tool works best. But then all of a sudden we're facing something where all those years and all those tools we want to apply to solving a problem maybe won't work. And so I think that's, that goes back to your statement about the relationships. You know, I can call you and you can begin to pull my mind out of, you know, Hey, that's great. That's great. The way you've been thinking but look at it this way. So it's that word you said, relationship, that puts us in a conversation. And it's that conversation that makes me come out of the, try, you know, I'm trying to hone in and make that groove so tight that I can rely on that tool every time, but maybe that's not the right tool for the moment. And it's you pulling me out of it or, you know, one of my other colleagues being able to have that conversation. So that's, yeah, I really appreciate that, that, that word relationships and how that leads to, new discovery and, and a curiosity about trying something new for, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this might be a good segue to my next question. And I don't, you, maybe you've already answered this, but um, leading well takes discipline. Um, and what do you feel are the essential elements um, for, uh, or practices for being a good leader um, that you feel have really helped you in terms of your leadership um, growth and journey? And, and you may have just answered this question, but maybe there's something else that you would add to it. Yeah. I mean, you said, again, a good word that you just used was discipline. And I think mm -hmm. developing discipline is everyone's own personal challenge. Um, I think discipline goes a little bit hand in hand with the word I used earlier, focus, mm -hmm. you know, and we are so distracted these days by so many issues, um, you know, 
phone calls and meetings and interruptions, text, direct messaging. And so being able to just give things a time and having that discipline is certainly, certainly key. Um, developing the tools and the toolbox, like I was saying, but then having that ability to not always think that that tool is the right thing for every situation. And then I think the other one I think about a lot is um, my definition of leadership is uh, being a player and a coach. I like that term, the player coach. It also, another way to look at it is sort of um, leader or support role. And I like to sort of know that sometimes the value of the team is going to be stronger if I'm in a support role. If there's, you know, an architect, a client rep, a client, a whole team of people, I'm, I'm a support with that. If it's subcontractors and building the building and employees of mine, I'm the leader of that. So being able to also understand that don't try to be a leader when you need to be a supporter and you need to be more of a different integral part of a team. And so I think that's, that. I mean, the, the other things I said, that's one that's really important to me is, is knowing your role for the right, for the appropriate situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I love that. And it, it, it actually speaks again to you and how you are in being willing to like be in a situation and go, you know, what do I know? What do I not know? How can I best um, be and act and um, mm. engage in this uh, in order to create the best outcome. So there's not this, um, again, I, you know, my, my experience of you, you don't have a lot of um, ego. And again, I, I'll also say that I don't mean that in a ego in a negative way. We all have ego. It runs yeah, us right. today. Uh, but that thing of like needing to um, like have all the answers and, mm. and but because I think that a lot of that is really born for us out of our own insecurity of like being afraid of what we don't know and then thinking we should know that then creates this um you know just this sense of needing to feel like we're you know we're in control all the time and right. or that we know everything and it's just it's a stressful situation and i think that that ability to be able to go well i know what i know but i also know what i don't know and can i be okay with that and it's a balance right because there are times when we don't get to show up as, hey, hey, I don't know. Like when when it's our job to be the leader, <laughs> like we go find out before we show up and go, yeah. hey, I don't know, right? Yeah. But um, it's also that humility to be able to go, okay, um, everybody's got to have a, a clear voice in this situation. You know, when you talk about a project team, and um, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. The humility or the uh, what is it? It's, it's it's almost empowering sometimes to say. I don't know, because as soon as you admit that you don't know, you can then go to figuring out how to know and how to know solves the problem. So it's, it's almost a faster way to get where you need to go. I totally agree. Um, I totally and that's, that's hard for humans and construction. It's such a, you know, it's very <laughs> hard to admit fault <laughs> or that you don't know something in construction or, or even in architecture. I mean, I, you know, my background's architecture before construction. I went to school in architecture. I just remember professors, you know, being so knowledgeable about things and wanting to sort of have this sort of dynamic of, you know, professor student power and, uh, I always felt stronger when I would say, I don't understand what you're talking about. And I didn't always say that, you know, it took time to learn to say those things. But when I did, it felt more powerful than just keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause then you can stop the internals. You said this, like there's more peace there or ease, right? Cause yeah. not the struggle of like, yeah, just stop the struggle of trying to figure yeah. out what I think yeah. I should know. It's like that, that, I, what I call it the monkey mind, right? Like of I should know, or I should right. not like, that's what really trips us up. So that ability to be able to just, yeah, like you say, I don't know. I don't understand. I think part of it too, Vicki, is like, it's like finding your people. You know what I mean? It's like on a team, you want to be able to um, find people who I love differences. I don't want people to be like me. I don't want to be like others, but that ability to communicate. And like we were just saying with, where your counterpart can also say, I don't know. And then you can collaborate. And that to me, that that's a moment where everything rises to a higher level um, and you can achieve more. Yeah. 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 Totally agree. Um, 
All right, I'm going to ask my next question here. I think that's, uh, I got a couple more questions for you. All right. Uh, so thank you for that. And do you have a philosophy about how you manage a project um, or your business that are the guideposts for how you coordinate um, with others and take action? Um, I think solutions and actions and identifying strategies and the tactics that support the strategies, um, I feel have to be built out of the particulars. We were talking earlier about the details yeah, and, and the relationships going back to that word you said earlier, that being to able to develop it. So I'm walking into a project where I already have a relationship and in, in this industry, I, I will walk into a project and it'll often be the same player, new client, but the same architect or engineer. Those projects tend to get going faster and quicker and walking into a project where everyone's a new player. I think the big challenge is how quickly can you develop the relationship um, to really pull from the details, identify a process, a critical path, um, so I think it, it kind of depends on the nature of where you are relative to your previous experience and then having to build and identify, yeah. um, if I'm here, how do I get to there? Or, hey, wait, I'm actually starting back here and I need to get to here first to get to there. So I think the big one is being able to clue in to where you are and how do you get to the next step. So how, like, how to talk, tie that in for me into your philosophy, if you like, if you could just like complete that, like, so I get that that's a practice. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a right. practice. Like there's so what's a, the philosophy like there's behind a, it, right? Yeah. And when I say philosophy or um, uh, like a guidepost, it's more mm. like, and, and you've spoken to a number of things here. And so, you know, they're, you you may have already again shared what it is that you would share about this, but the the question really has to do with like what's your like when faced with any particular situation, um, like what is your like guiding post or like something that's yeah. just your philosophy about how you run your business that you feel is really important or how you are as a leader that you feel is really important that you go this this is my, this is my guiding, you know, um, yeah. North well, I think how I operate. Yeah. I think, thank, thank you, by the way. I think that kind of kicks me to a different level of how to answer the question. Um, I would say every project endeavor, you have to have the vision. So my philosophy or guidepost would be what is the vision and how can we, and then the next step is, so identify the vision. And then if, if you don't have a shared vision, you're not going to get to where you want to get as best as you can. And so whatever that team is, do we have a shared vision? How do we establish a shared vision? And, you know, there are obvious ones in construction, quality project and schedule and cost. But, but ultimately, if we all don't buy into a more detailed process, it's not going to work. So I think the big picture is what, what's the vision and are we sharing that vision if we're not to a point where we all feel on track? Yeah, it, it becomes the thing that keeps us on focus. I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, you know, for the last year I've been, um, uh, I seem to be really entrenched in this whole learning about setting intentions mm. and that setting intentions is almost like creating this blueprint for like, how do I want to be in this situation? Or how do I want to have this project? It, as you're describing, like, how do I want this project to go? How do we want to operate as a team? Like, what is our, what's the thing that when stuff happens, because stuff always happens between where we are and where we want to, you know, where we're going to end up at the end of the job that having an intention about here's how we're going to be together all along the way to get to this result called we you know we created the blueprint but there's also this we'll have been successful at this project if we fulfilled on our intention together or our or, or mm. our shared vision of what we're going to do together your words um that yeah, that's great because then I mean, what I like about it, and then I've really been learning a lot about this thing about intention is that it informs us all along the way and informs me, I can speak for myself, like it really helps inform me about when I'm in the middle of a process, 
is this my intention? Like, is, you know, is this guiding me in my actions and what I'm doing to fulfill on the intention that I set or in, in a team situation, you know, um, that it can be like the good, like a guidepost, right? It's that thing that like mm. lifts up, makes us put up our head and go, all right, are we on track, on tra- off track on that? Are we actually doing, are we living up to that vision that we set together? Right. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, yeah, raising that, what's the intention? What are we intending to do here? Why? The what and the why seem, sometimes we just dive into things and we forget, or maybe we get it at an intuitive level, but I think it it also helps to articulate it, to put it out there, to make it sort of the forefront of our minds. So yeah, I like that word. What is the intention? What are we trying to accomplish and why? Yeah. And I think it's the Again, it kind of goes back to the focus. It's like, let's put that in our minds. Let's sit here and agree what that is. Let's say it together. And I mean, you don't really do it that way. And it sounds a little bit of a kumbaya moment, but you do have to get to that point in the meeting where you feel like, okay, we're all on the same page, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, there's an old expression and I don't, I don't know where this, I don't remember where this came from, but it's like that storming and norming about, Mm. um, like, setting as you say that vision that intention like you know what are we up to together and it it's it's that thing about you know it's just another element of at the beginning of a project how do you have it be successful right or running a business how do you have it be successful there's got to be a for the sake of what are you doing it and how do you want to be together because that's way more interesting than i'm just doing work (laughs) Um, I want to be having I don't know about you but I want to be having fun whatever I'm doing and it's got to have an element of something that's interesting and worthwhile to do uh you know whether it's a project or running a business or you know having a having a relationship so yeah yeah all right my last question thank you um is what piece of advice um would you have for new business owners or managers or leaders um, and who are maybe at the beginning of their leadership journey, like what, what would be your biggest piece of advice for them? Uh, develop relationships and mentors. I mean, reach out to people, you know, people that they've seen on, on, on these, um, you know, video blogs and um, reach out to people like me, develop, develop mentorships and develop those conversations. I think that's the best way to sort of, understand someone else's journey and figure out how does that apply to mine and not that you have to take someone else's blueprint and think it's yours but it begins to trigger a lot of those thoughts and i think um you know right now i have a um a colleague um someone who i know who decided to join a um one of our subcontractors and partner with one of, other, one of our subcontractors. And so he and I have this relationship where we just check in with one another once in a while. And he's not a competitor to me. He's a, in the world of the subcontracting, but you know, there's a lot of commonality with health and safety and construction, you know, how important that is or insurance or contracts. And, you know, you, through you, I know some other people who are also general contractors and, you know, we'll go on the phone once in a while and, talk about some of the more complex issues um you know because we'd like to be able to spend time building houses but so much of our day is filled with all the other outside critical things we have to deal with health safety insurance contracts so i think any new business owner develop the relationship have a conversation and i think build those those roles of having friends mentors coaches nice yeah beautiful yep Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly how you do what you do. So I really appreciate that. Peter, thank you. Um, This has been a fun conversation. And I think that you've shared a lot of really great um, practices and ideas and um, uh, just philosophies about how you do what you do that I have seen and, you know, clearly has created success in your world as not only as a human being and an individual, but as a leader and as a business owner. And uh, so thank you for sharing that. Thanks for sharing your story and your journey. And yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say my pleasure. And what I loved about today was it feels like most of our conversations. (laughs) (laughs) It kind of does, huh? I was was fun about it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for all of you watching and listening, thanks again for being here with me on the Profit Builder. And I look forward to seeing you next time.